Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, today is our is our, uh, uh, our final our final uh, 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 webinar for the software companies. Cornerstone Building Solutions is, is here to tell us all about their product. Uh, Scott and Shay will be your presenters. You can you'll see them. You might be able to see them by now on on, on your screen. And I'm going, to, I'm going to be turning this webinar over to them. Some of you have, uh, probably most of you, have been to our prior webinars, so you already know how, how we run them. Uh, 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 please put in your questions in the in the uh, uh, question box on your screen. I will read them to Scott and Shay when they're done with their presentation. Uh, we'll have, we'll hopefully have time. I'm sure we will have time today to get to all the different questions. Uh, and uh, make sure you make sure you turn up the heat on their seats, okay? We want to make sure that they uh, uh, ready to answer you. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, turn over. What do you want me to do? I'm gonna make uh, Scott. Okay, Scott, I'm getting ready to turn over. I have turned it over. You can you can now take yeah. control and good luck with your presentation, folks. All right, thanks, Ken. Uh, this is a great idea to kind of highlight the software companies. Oops. Did we lose that? No, you're good. Okay. I'm seeing, are you seeing uh, my slide deck here? Let me, let me do yes, that again. Yes, we have your slide. You have your slide presentation. You're good, Scott. All right. So we've been around for quite a while. We'll go into a little bit of our history uh, and we'll have plenty of time for Q and A. We've, we've got about 35, 40 minutes for our presentation and then uh, Q and A. So get your questions ready. So today, this is basically, I like to tell people what we're going to cover so you know what to expect and a little bit of history about our company and some of the pain points that we address for our security and fire dealers. Uh, software, basically what it does, uh, modules, features, etc. And we have a tightly integrated services. So we'll go through that as well. We integrate with lots of companies many central stations, most of the major ones. We have, uh, the last section will be a little bit deeper dive into a few of our key software elements and very short videos, but you can see the power of, of the Cornerstone software. And then we'll have Q&A, probably 15, 20 minutes of that. Um, if you need to drop off for whatever reason, we're happy to answer questions via email. So I, I stuck our email address there at the bottom, info at alarmbills.com. So first, quickly, history. So I founded this business in 1999 with an acquisition of a division of a now defunct central station. At that time, we were doing financing and recurring billing services. So you see we're called Cornerstone Billing Solutions. We are way, way beyond just a billing company, but that was really our core service back in 1999 and, and for the first roughly eight to ten years of our life we were focused on recurring billing services and we still have that as a a, a kind of a core uh, service we'll, we'll get into that shortly we took our software to the cloud in in 2001 so really in terms of the web we were an early really a pioneer um, you know going to the cloud at that time honestly security dealers tended not to trust it um, that's pretty much flip-flopped. Uh, people now do most of their stuff and have most of their software in the cloud. We added collection services. So again, that's a um, collection slow pay follow-up is something many of our dealers use uh, today. And uh, many of our new ones decide to have us handle as well. We launched our payment portal, alarmpayments.com is, is a, a cornerstone portal that basically gives our dealers an immediate uh, way to let their subscribers pay online. Very, very popular. Uh, we upgraded our service module, really a rebuild with quotes and lots of other features in 2015. We did our first central station integration in, in 2015 as well. We added our mobile app uh, basically uh, two years ago, uh, an app for field technicians, and we'll, we'll see a short video on that mobile app. And we completed our 14th integration, and we'll have a list of those integrations later in, the, in today's presentation. So 
So just briefly where we are now, we started in the life safety industry. We are still in the life safety industry. We've not gone to any other industries. We feel like there's a lot to be done in this business. So we are a specialist in your industry, very important. We feel like our software is, is fully developed. We've been around a long time. Uh, we've really built it out and we've got lots and lots of features, filters, uh, and you'll see some of that today. Again, it's not a software demo today by any means. It, it should just show you, you know, who we are, what we do, uh, what it costs and, and, and how that could help you. We have a somewhat unique solution in that we have a, a combination of software and very tightly integrated automation of certain services, mainly related to recurring billing. So it saves our customers time and money every month. It does a lot of work for them. And again, we'll get into that in a bit. And we're famous for real-time support. So if you are stuck, we help you get unstuck right away. So we were available by phone or by chat and you're going to get a human being if you call in and they're going to help you with whatever you're stuck on and let you move on with your day as, as some of you no doubt know that's unusual in this industry it tends to be a ticketing ticket based uh you know if you have an issue you submit a ticket and wait for a response so this is an important slide uh really as we look at our customer base what you know we, we we come to the conclusions there are three or four things that most of them really like and and they're loyal to us because of of these uh, attributes so the first one is the software itself we think we've set it up to be very logically laid out easy to follow easy to navigate you don't need to be an engineer to use our software it's pretty intuitive so we'll, we'll again see the uh, uh, one of the the main screens customer record in a bit it's an affordable solution and we want our, our dealers really to feel like at the end of each month when we send them their recap, which includes the fees that, uh, that we charge, which we'll get into, that it's, it's a great value. They're getting a lot, they're getting a lot for, uh, for what they're paying. They love our immediate support. Again, it makes us a little bit of an exception in this industry. And they like the breadth of what we offer. It's really cornerstone billing solutions and the emphasis on solutions. It's a, a solution consisting both of software and services. So it, it should be obvious, all of you use software, the efficiency of having your, the key functions in your company connected. When you have connections that allow for, let's say, a, a prospect to be entered, a quote to be generated quickly. You get the quote out the door, it gets accepted, it then gets installed, pushed into the workflow and build, uh, et cetera. The, the flow of kind of the key tasks that you need to execute every day, uh, having those built into a single software platform is super valuable and a big time saver. We, we have companies come to us that are using three, four, five different software packages. They like the fact that, that, that the most important ones, no software company will do 100% of what you want them to do, but the most important ones are here. Uh, basically, your quoting, your installations, your service management, your billing, collections, all in one place. Efficiency. So I'm going to highlight the kind of what the software includes, the scope of the software, if you will. So here is a, an example of a customer record. I know this is a bit small, but let me just highlight a few things if I could. So this is a customer record. If you look, the icons on the left-hand side, you can see they're click away from all of almost all of the important stuff. So recurring charges, uh, service reminders, let's say fire inspections can be saved here your entire service history for this customer is here you've obviously got invoices you've got any documents that that you scanned in uh, you can upload those to our cloud or, or scan them in locally your equipment list so what's installed at the customer premise and that's critical if you go out on a service call and that'll, that'll be in the mobile app uh, zone list quotes and the like a lot here uh, you can keep contract information 
beginning and end dates. So very, very robust place to keep all of the stuff about your subscriber accounts. Uh, get to the quoting. So you can do a, use our system to generate a beautiful five page quote uh, with all of the details, you know, prices, you can suppress those prices as well. Uh, recurring information and so on. So flexible proposals, it can be a two page quote or a 10 page quote, depending on the type of quote. Detailed work order. So this is really the dispatcher's view of a service ticket. Uh, we call them service tickets, they're work orders. Uh, you can see date received, date scheduled, date completed. You can build in labor rates to save a lot of time when it comes time to generate the invoice for that, that service call. You've got uh, the ability to take signature. Uh, you can, there's a ticket pull list here for your text. So a lot of power here. And again, this is just a high level view of what the software does, the scope. Pretty typical drag and drop calendar here. We'll, we'll look at that briefly in, in the videos, uh, but color coded, lots of filtering. You can filter on skill set. You can filter by person. You can filter by appointments versus uh, uh, actual scheduled jobs, uh, follow-ups, et cetera. So a lot of power in, in a single screen. Multi-location inventory. So this is perpetual inventory with counts. And if you, you do a PO through the system, it'll add to those counts. As you use parts, it'll reduce the counts. Uh, you can do filtering for short, uh, basically, or your short parts, or you're below your reorder level. So you can basically generate a PO and make sure you have the parts. Mobile app, uh, very easy to use, phone or tablet based, uh, very, very efficient and clean, easy to look at, easy to navigate. Collections module, so we've got a module that our dealers can use if they've got a collections person. Uh, this is a, a partial screenshot, but basically think of it as an interactive aging report. So instead of having to print out a hard copy aging and working your way through that hard copy, which is kind of old school. This allows you to have an interactive aging, see where you're at, you know, what was your last activity? Maybe you sent them a collection letter. The next step is a collection call. Very valuable. Um, not This is optional. Some of our dealers use it, some don't need it. They've got mostly auto pay. And there's more. And again, I've got our um, info at Alarm Bill's email here if you want to send us a specific question that, that we don't get to in the Q&A. All right, so everybody wants to know in this industry what it costs, uh, and I'm gonna go through an example here. Our average dealer is somewhere 900 to 1,000 accounts. Uh, we've got some very, very large ones and lots of small ones as well, smaller companies. Um, but a typical dealer with 900 accounts pays about 265 bucks a month for this package. So that's basically our software, the quoting module for a couple of users, the uh, service module, which has the, the the tickets we showed you, the calendar, the inventory. Uh, you can use our system for service billing, installation billing, and obviously taking payment, posting payment. Uh, the payment portal, alarm payments, and very robust reporting. Won't really have time to look at that today, but uh, tons of reports that uh, will keep you on track. So let's talk about the recurring billing automation. So we, when we set up way back when we were a billing specialist, we've really evolved to be a, a recurring automation uh, software platform. So, you know, one of the questions we get asked is, you know, are you taking over my billing? And the answer is, is no. Basically, you still manage things. We just schedule things to happen when they're supposed to happen. So uh, today's the 12th of October. There's a batch that runs tonight for about I don't know, I think 30 or 40 of our of our dealers. Uh, and that's an automated process that generates a whole bunch of stuff, including paper bills. So tomorrow the paper bills will go out the door, uh, all in our customer's name. So it's not Cornerstone, it's it's you. So it's your invoice. Basically, we provide it as, as a service. We automate the process. Um, auto pay. So credit card, ACH, uh, we Again, the process, the automation process, tees up those automatic payments and sets them up in the correct, let's say, batch, the first of the month, 15th of the month, or other dates during the month. So 
again, that's what your your team would do, would do. This just basically creates a very regimented fail safe process to get it done um, exactly on time. The online payment portal. So again, a, a way for your customers to pay. If they happen to get an email invoice, they can pay through this portal. Um, some or all of their open invoices, and those those payments will be automatically processed by us, by uh, basically our automation, posting automation. Recurring revenue tracking, this is really a snapshot of uh, what some people call an RMR roll forward uh, report, which has beginning, you know, additions to recurring, ending recurring, changes in recurring, which include rate changes and several other things. So very, very granular. We've got, we work with several um, uh, dealers that are borrowing customers. So we need to make sure this data is right for the lender uh, because they're lending based on this type of report. And then slow pay follow-up. So as a service, if a company gets busy and or they lose, let's say their collections person, slow pay follow-up, uh, is really the the collections process consisting of texting emailing letters statements um, and calls so very uh, lots of touches during the month to try to get people back current a little bit more about billing so i've got the left side and the right side here so we have a, a one pager which we're happy to email to any of you uh, just send us a note of info alarm bills but we've got about 18 20 kind of somewhat unique things that we do that uh, are part of making sure recurring billing is done accurately on time. Uh, and I've listed a few of those here on the left. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but the first one, run a recurring billing, uh, pre-billing audit every month. The intent of that is to make sure you don't miss any billing, but 100% of what should be billed is actually billed in the recurring batch. So that audit always finds errors, issues, and we send those to you to, to fix before the recurring is actually processed. Um, at the bottom there on the left, statements are automatically sent to past due accounts. Um, that's often a nuisance if somebody has not paid, they need to get a statement and we include that as part of our recurring automation. We get questions from dealers uh, who say there's absolutely no way. We have a very unique billing setup. We've got these weird, quirky things. There's no way you can handle that for us. And so I've listed some of those here. Complex multi-site invoices, uh, barter accounts where you need to generate an invoice but not send it, basically use it to offset services from your barter partner. You need, let's say, multiple ways to deliver the invoice, let's say both hard copy email, you need a PO number on the invoice or some other special description. Um, you need auto pays to be run on other dates besides let's say the first or the 15th. Uh, you need a Excel version of your invoice. Let's say it's a complicated uh, 200 site invoice. Your customer wants it uh, emailed in a CSV and Excel format. So for all of these and more, which I didn't have room to list, uh, you are covered in our system. So having done this for 25 years, uh, we've really built a lot of flexibility into the recurring automation to allow you to do this unique stuff that you think nobody else but your company can handle. So if you think you can stump us, give me a call. Uh, let's talk about you know your specific issue or question. All right, what does this cost? So paper invoicing, uh, postage rates keep going up, uh, unfortunately, but it's it's still a buck 16, basically 116 for 100 uh, invoices. Auto pay, the standard rate's $55 uh, per 100, 55 cents each. Uh, depends on volume, there there can be some volume discounts just depending on your setup. We, we try to customize our pricing. Credit card merchant fee, we, we have a, a, there's a little bit more um, detail we can get into for your company, but on average it runs around 3%, and these are usually not swiped cards, they're pre-authorized uh, charges, which means you pay a little bit higher rate, but all in all, we, we typically save people money. Usually they're paying more than that through their merchant company. So this is just an example of that 900 account dealer, and uh, Bear with me one second. 
Shay, can you see that? Okay, sorry. I think I clicked the wrong thing. All right, so this is an example of a 900 account dealer with a couple hundred paper invoices, a couple hundred auto pay invoices, so 400 total invoices. Um, and it includes the payment portal, includes the service tickets, includes the quotes. So it's a pretty full fledged, uh, you, you know, uses a lot of uh, pieces of the Cornerstone software as well as the billing services. So, bottom right, you can see kind of a summary. Uh, for the software, like we saw before, about 265 bucks a month for this dealer and for the billing. Uh, it, if you add up the billing, which is top right here in the yellow shaded box, <clears throat> it's kind of hidden by my, my uh, dashboard here. But anyway, if you add the two up, 607 bucks, that works out to about 63 cents per recurring account. So if this dealer uh, you know, is doing 30, 35 bucks for an average monitored account, and they're using the Cornerstone system for that 30 or 35 dollar monitored account. They're paying about 63 cents, which works out to about two percent or two cents on the dollar for both the recurring, you know, billing services automation, as well as the the software, the specialized security specialized software. So. We think that's a pretty remarkable deal uh, because it includes so much that the 400 invoices that uh, the automation processes they don't have to lift a finger it just happens on schedule every month like clockwork so very valuable and really they're getting back time that you know most of our customers desperately need so finally live customer support uh, we we talked a little bit about that earlier but you know if you're stuck and you need to get unstuck we've got a you know, it, 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 that is our business model and has been since day one. We've also just built up frequently asked questions, kind of how do I do, you know, X, Y, or Z built into our system, which is, is self-serve. So dealers can get their question answered through that new that new portal, online help desk, call it a knowledge base. Integrated with lots of central stations. So you can see the list here, most of the major ones in the country. Also integrate with, uh, other partners, um, alarm.com, QuickBooks, we'll look briefly at that. Uh, new integration with a company called Portal. Uh, Portal is a kind of a quoting software, but they've got a really cool um, integration with vendors to update prices. So prices are changing quickly right now with inflation being what it is. And the Portal integration basically, uh, we'll, we'll see it in a brief video shortly. Onboarding, so getting off to a good start with our customers is absolutely essential. And you can see here, um, it's, it's something we spend a lot of, um, we invest a lot of time and, and money into to make sure that we do get off to a good start. On the right-hand side, these are some of the packages that we've converted from. So when we convert, we don't wanna redo the same kind of messy process. We build conversion routines. Uh, for these different software packages. So we've we've taken over, we basically migrated them from their old package to Cornerstone, and it's pain, pretty painless because of the conversion routines that we built. We have a standard 30-day onboarding process, so not everything gets done in 30 days, but the critical stuff gets done, the data gets moved quickly. It's very regimented and uh, in terms of, you know, staying on track and keeping, um, it's not as painful as as you know many of these kind of conversion migration processes are because it's so well organized we do a lot of setup consulting to make sure we get it right and we have comprehensive training obviously initially on certain functions and then schedule training for many months after the initial conversion and the initial training critical to get off to a good start all right so we're going to drill down for the next 10 minutes or so into some functions, some features of our software that really resonate with our dealers, save them a lot of time, save them money. And here's the list, but I'll just tackle each one. And these videos are short, usually about 30 seconds. So let me start with the mobile app. So we're in the interest of time, we basically are already logged into the mobile app. So this is a field service technician who's looking at an appointment. And that appointment is, is pulled really from our 
desktop software in the Cornerstone system. So let's take a look. So you can see the tech can scroll, scroll down, see the key cu customer information, phone numbers, are they owed money, uh, central station account number, and, and service history. A lot of power here. They can text or email the customer from the app. They can pull the service items, which is the parts. They can add a photo here. They can uh, take payment here. Uh, they're going to complete this uh, this ticket. I guess this is the day ticket, and they, I believe, are now going to create the invoice. So they completed the job. They're going to create the invoice in a few seconds. There's the invoice. So they can, you know, finish the job on the spot, create the invoice. The customer owes 820 bucks, and they can email them the invoice, which is what's happening here. And they can also take payment through our alarm payments portal immediately. So they, they can collect that 820 bucks, super valuable, uh, don't have to chase receivables. So if you look at efficiency of a mobile app versus chasing a bunch of paper and paper-based tickets, um, it, it's pretty easy to see a payoff. So if you're able to add for a technician <clears throat> by using the mobile app and getting rid of the paper chase three jobs a week, 200 bucks a job, so that's the, the bottom right graphic here. That's 600 bucks a week, 2,400 bucks a month. You know, it doesn't take long. We charge anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks for the mobile app, depending on number of users. So you have an instant payback and then some, enough to pay really for you know, this, the entire software package and probably the services that you're getting, the, the uh, automated recurring services. All right, this, I mentioned Portal, which is a really cool software company we integrate with that does updates, uh, real-time updates of part prices, very critical today with inflation on the RAM page. And so we, again, in the interest of time, we started, uh, we've already connected to Portal, to their site, and pulled in their quotes. And this is gonna be the process of basically accepting a quote in Cornerstone through our, uh, through, through the uh, ticket, ticket dashboard here. So let me go ahead and start this. <clears throat> so there's a simple accept quote uh, button in a, in a second or two it created the service ticket. And you can see it brought over the items from the portal uh, quote that they did, you know, they did through them. And in accepting the quote, it created this appointment, the little red thing. We're going to drag it over to the drag and drop calendar and we're going to schedule it. And it's that simple. So very user-friendly, a lot of the critical information about technicians is here. And along the left-hand side of this ticket, you can see you can quickly click to your service items, which are your parts. You can click on a ticket pull list so you know what parts to get if it's you're, you're in the office first thing in the morning. Uh, you can take signature. Anyway, there's, there's a lot of things that you can do. Uh, but this is an example of a recently completed integration with Portal. It's portal.io on the web very very cool uh, technology they do things that we don't do we do a whole bunch of things they don't do so it's, it's a good partnership all right we're going to move on to a central station audit so one of the key um one of the big complaints we get uh is hey i have a hard time keeping my monitor list in sync with my customer management software in this case it'd be the cornerstone list so we used to help dealers do Excel-based lookups, which was kind of painful and manual. So we decided about eight years ago to build this uh, central station audit report. And what it does is it uses our integrations with our central station partners to basically do a very, very quick matchup of those two different lists. So let's take a look. So this is the reports uh, menu, and we're going to go to the central station audit. There's a little glow bottom right there we're going to click on, which connects to this, the monitoring company in this case. And what it'll do is download the open device list in about, about two seconds. So there is the open device list. Now that we've got that list, the report is already built. So we just need to run the report. Uh, and that's what's happening here. And it's doing a whole bunch of data crunching. And there are different reasons why the lists might be out of sync. Maybe it's a typo. Uh, but this will basically pull up that list of exceptions. So it'll ignore anything that matches. It'll only show you the exceptions, 
where your list at your monitoring company does not match up with the list in Cornerstone. And this is the resulting report, and it can be many, many pages long, but usually the, the, the tough part is just doing it the first time. Once you've done it the first time, you can uh, you know, basically run this every month, and you'll have probably have a maybe a, no exceptions or a handful of exceptions you can jump on. Easy way to keep your lists in sync. Uh, you can see here there's a section missing the white space in this report. That's because we had to uh, remove the names to protect the innocent. But otherwise, this is what the report looks like. So you've got sections where uh, there's no match because it's open in Cornerstone, uh, but it's it's closed at the central station, or vice versa. It's it's uh, open in central station, but maybe it doesn't even exist in Cornerstone. So you you will find missed billing where you have services that you're paying for at your monitoring company, but they're not being billed. So it helps you find that revenue and start billing it. It also helps you find things like accounts that um, were closed in our system in Cornerstone, but are still open at the central station. So very valuable, a time saver um, and a money maker really. <clears throat> this is a recurring research tool, which is a way to, let's say you want to find cu uh, customers that have really low rates. You signed them up 20 years ago and they're sitting at 15 bucks a month. And you say, hey, we've got to find those. We're losing money on that. Our current rate is $30, $35. Let's find our uh, customers with rates that are too low. So we're going to look for residential monitoring in this tool that Cornerstone built that's less than $18. So a low rate account, and we're going to refresh. And this immediately pulls up a list of about 10 customers that really are undercharged. And we've got a tool, won't show it today, but a tool that then allows you to tag these accounts and put through a price increase pretty much um, you know, immediately, either a percentage increase or a dollar increase. So really valuable, um, and it, it takes what often is, we think of as kind of a black box, which is your recurring revenue, and exposes it all, allows you to slice and dice it and get to you know, find groups of accounts based on the services they've got, et cetera. But, in this example, we took, let's say we got 50 accounts that are undercharged. You're able to raise the rates by seven bucks. You know, it's 350 bucks a month that you're picking up just by using a tool that's you know part of our software. QuickBooks integration. So this is really fast. There's a lot. We have um, a couple of videos on QuickBooks. Let us know if you're interested or if you have QuickBooks and want to know how the integration works. But this basically loads a complete month's worth of activity. Uh, and the, you can see that we're, we're already logged into QuickBooks connected. And now we're going to post these a full month of activity, about $70,000 worth of, of payments over to QuickBooks. And what, what this integration does is it does it through journal entries. So very fast, uh, very accurate and ensures that you end up with an accurate profit and loss accurate balance sheet. So it broke it into four categories. I won't get into what they were, but there, there were, I think, a few dozen line items, things like service revenue, you know, Berg installation, um, let's say, you know, monitoring revenue. They were part of those different buckets. It instantly moved those over to QuickBooks from our system so that you can first tie out your books, everything matches, and you can book those into QuickBooks in a way that allows you to have an accurate profit loss. So very powerful. Um, and again, we're happy to go into detail if you're if you have an interest. And finally, quick document creation, then we'll get to our QA. So we we can in the Cornerstone system bring in documents that um, like the Kirschenbaum contract. So if if you have the Kirschenbaum contract we can set that up in the Cornerstone system, allow you to quickly retrieve it for a brand new customer, populate it. Uh, some of that's automated, some you may need to do manually depending on what is entered in a record, and then basically generate the, the contract, um, save it in our system, and then uh, get it out to either a vendor or, or a customer or to yourself, perhaps to upload to DocuSign or some other document management service. So let's take a quick look at how that process works. And again, we started kind of midway through. This is a new monitoring agreement. 
and this is our software it's being entered into that section of the software and then we generate the contract so we're going to grab this generic agreement here and we're going to you can see just clicking okay pulled up the fillable pdf already populated name address phone and a bunch of other stuff so it saves you a lot of time data entry but it's fillable pdf so you can from here complete anything that was not mapped that needs to be completed and then you can send it out to the customer by uh, through the, the email process so from here it goes to the customer uh, and it can be saved locally in, in the customer's network as well as let's say uploaded to an e-signature service if, if you're using one so the, the benefits of, the, of this are pretty uh, pretty clear basically save a lot of time all right, so we're just about to our Q&A. Um, we are not a large company. We've kind of stayed small small by design. This is a team photo from last year, Halloween. We've got a few more members of our team this year, but we're professionals, friendly, accessible. Um, I'm the owner, uh, been in the business 25 years. So we think we're easy to work with. Uh, I think the software is very, robust it does most of the critical things that need to be done you know day to day week to week month to month and uh, we hope you think so too so let me go on to all right so we've got just about right we've got about 18 minutes give or take for questions okay well the first one is can can you migrate credit card data from 40. Mm -hmm. Great question. Yes, we probably have done that from Forte, I don't know, 20 times. So the, the only issue with Forte is that the um, it, it can take some time. You know, we, we can turn it around quickly, but it, it can be it can take anywhere from a week to, to four to six weeks. But the answer is yes. Can you migrate credit card data? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, can you set up recurring work orders for inspection? Yes. Uh, th through one of the buttons we briefly highlighted in this uh, in this presentation, um, it's it's recurring, basically a recurring appointment. So you can set up, let's say, a fire inspection annually, quarterly, through that button within the account. So if it's Ross Construction, which is the account we're looking at, basically you set up a recurring appointment and it'll appear on the calendar as an unscheduled appointment when that appointment should happen at that point you can reach out to your customer schedule it and assign a tech yes okay uh do you integrate with quickbooks desktop desktop quickbooks desktop yeah not directly in the sense of a push button integration but exactly the same journal entries that that were pushed to QuickBooks online uh, a few minutes ago are basically exportable as a CSV, which can, depending on how, how good you are with QuickBooks importing, you can import to QuickBooks desktop, or you can just open it up and enter it as a, as a memorized transaction, update the amounts each month, and you're good to go. So I, I do, um, you know, our company uses QuickBooks. You know, if you use memorized transactions for, uh, uh, for, things like financial on end of month stuff, it's pretty easy to update those numbers in five minutes, 10 minutes. Good question. Can you create custom fillable forms for techs and administrators? Yep. Um, Shay, I'm gonna get a drink. Do you wanna, we, we covered it in that brief video, but I'm gonna let Shay answer a few of these. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Scott. Um, you 100% can. So if you have a form that you currently use and want to continue using, we can help map those fields on that form so that you can upload customer information, zones, call lists, really anything that's in Cornerstone that can be mapped. Um, so yes, we can make those very easy and efficient for you. Does your customer get a local copy of your software? Good question. Not of the software. It's cloud-based. There's no way it would work in their local environment. But we have customers that set up um, weekly or month-end uh, basically data uh, zipped password protected data sets that they send to themselves because they just like the comfort of having a local copy of their data so 
uh, we have uh, memorized reports that they can set up. So at, let's say at the end of each month, they get a full list of their customers, a full list of their recurring information, and possibly several other things. So it, usually we our system's on 24-7. You know, it's uh, it doesn't go down. It has never gone down. But uh, some people like the, the comfort of having a local copy. Good question. How many mobile app users can be added to the with the starter package? Uh, Shay, you want to tackle that? Yeah, absolutely. So we don't necessarily have a starter package, if you will. We designed our setup to be a la carte, so you can choose what you need and what you don't need. In terms of users for the mobile app, it essentially is as many as you need. We have companies using one or two people. Maybe they're just a father and son team to some companies using 15, 20 technicians on that mobile app. So you actually will design it based on your needs and what um, what you would want out of that mobile app. What is what is the best feature of Cornerstone that is most often overlooked or underutilized? A great question. I think um, I would say a couple. Uh, the central station audit is really a critical thing to be doing every month. Um, it takes work to do that first one because you've got to get your, your list. It could be a very messy list. You need to get it in sync, but it's really valuable. Um, and again, a time, a, a money saver and a, and a money maker, uh, saving cost and finding revenue that's not being billed. Um, I think, you know, the other, I think the, the collections, I think is probably the second one. Shay's agreeing with me. I think uh, people get busy and they're working their way through an aging report, very inefficient. I think that the, for what we charge for collection services, it's it's a no-brainer because we're doing lots of touches. We In that service, if we're doing collections as a service, we send our dealers a quarterly report of our success because we're proud of our success. So we, we show them exactly what you spent, and then what we collected, so how much your, your return on investment, basically. So those are a couple. Shay, I don't know if you have any others. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think the collection module could be, is a little underutilized by a lot of our partners where they could actually make a lot of money, even if it's only five or six accounts per month. Like Scott said, it's a, extremely affordable for us to send out text messages, to send out letters and emails. Um, the third one probably for me would be our inventory module. Um, if done properly, it's a very powerful module that allows you to, like Scott said, do perpetual inventory, send out POs, track different trucks of what's located in those trucks, et cetera. Hey, your collection uh, uh, process, are, are you referring to simply sending out uh, invoices for, for the uh, customers, long companies, or are you acting as a collection agency? We're not acting as a collection agency. That's we work with a collection agency on the West Coast called ARM Solutions. Uh, we're basically doing, um, uh, it's, I think it's called third party, first, or, sorry, first party collections, um, where we're we're their we're their their uh, office person doing the slow pay follow up. So we started about ten days past due, and then work them until it gets to the point of seriously past due, say ninety days. And then usually they've got some other collection agency relationship, or they can work with ARM, which is a partner of ours. Uh, exported as Excel or PDF documents to be mailed or emailed independently. Well, that might have been a, a question that came at the end of several other questions. Wait a minute. Okay. Is there an inter-office communication module like Slack? There's, yeah, basically there's there's a chat. So through our system, there's a little chat button. I didn't show it today, but uh, it's equivalent to Slack. So you can pull up a, um, you're in an account, you can chat with our team, and I believe all those are saved in our Zoho. Our our, uh, it's it's the internal ticketing system. But um, yeah, it's it it's a way to immediately get an answer if you don't want to pick up the phone, the chat feature in, in Cornerstone. Does Cornerstone do job cost tracking? Yeah. Do we have a job cost report, job cost tracking, which is labor materials. Um, so it's it's built in of you. Again, that's the critical part of inventory. 
making sure that you've got accurate prices and accurate uh, well, accurate prices and costs. So it'll take the price information, deduct your part cost, deduct the labor on the job, and do yeah do job costing. So there's a job cost report built for that. Can invoices and proposals be exported as Excel or PDF documents to be mailed or emailed independently? Invoices can. Um, we have some customers that have 300 sites built on one invoice, and in that case, in in the case of the 300 sites, it's emailed to the headquarters of of the I think it's a grocery chain. So the answer is yes. I think what was the other question? Was it a quotes? Proposals. I already deleted it. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Can, can you assign multiple texts to the same job, and yeah. can tech add a tech to their job in the field? Yes. Yes. Yes to both of those. Can emailed messages be customized? Yeah. yeah absolutely. It's it's is a module. We didn't look at it today, but. It's a communications module, so you can pull up a, an individual account or groups of accounts. Um, you know, let's say 3G, 4G, you know, sunsetting. It was used by many dozens of our customers to get, you know, notices out to their customers about needing to upgrade their communicator to 4G, you know, 5G. So, yeah, or you can do one-off. You can do one, uh, basically pull up. And email something and you can customize what that says do you have a one do you have a a time tracking module for techs and office staff yeah you want to tackle that shay sure yep we we absolutely do so when it comes to the text they can clock in for the day they're nine to five if you will or they can clock in for their service jobs and then we do have a time card report that they can run to compare those two Office staff could do the same thing if they want to. It, you probably can see it in the quick screen we looked at of a customer record across the top. There's a time card button. Um, so yeah, long-winded answer, but yes, they'd be able to do that. And what about mobile tech time or hours? Yes, yep. They can do either for the day or on the job. They can clock in and clock out to track the labor on that job. So they can do either. Do you have payroll reports? <laughs> payroll reports? Yeah. Okay, uh, then we have a report on, it's basically a, a ticket, I'm sorry, a time card report that I believe can be exported to CSV. Uh, yeah, so it's not directly connected to say, paychecks or any of the payroll services, but you can send it to yourself if you're an admin and let's say weekly or biweekly or monthly, and then sort it and total it so you can get those basically get your hours into your payroll service can you chat with with other employees in the chat module yeah it sounds like what they're asking is chatting um, internally to their company and i think the answer to that is no yeah, yeah. okay there's time tracking export to quickbooks no not currently are your invoices custom customizable? Yeah. Yes. Um, I can pick that one. Yeah. <laughs> I just because I love them. I'm sorry. I think they're cool. So yeah. Um, the invoices themselves, the fronts are very nicely well done. They'll have your logo. They're full color. Um, you can do little messages on the front, uh, reminder to test your system. We'll be closed the week of Christmas, whatever it might be. But what's really nice about our invoices is on the back, you can actually do promo material, marketing material. Um, we have a bunch of templates that you can use or if you have a specific one you can send it to us to put on the back of those invoices um, you probably saw during the webinar we saw one for automatic payment options but you could have ones now that you maybe you're selling doorbell cameras or access control you could put that on the back or if they need to upgrade to 5g in the future you could remind them to call for their service so yes they're extremely customizable to what your company needs uh, can i keep my merchant and payment portal let me tackle that, Shay. Uh, probably not. Um, we we've got a um, a really good deal with our our merchant company, uh, and it usually saves our cust our new customers money versus what they're they're paying. So uh, we usually do a cost comparison. So we ask them for a month or two of of uh, merchant statements. We analyze those, get back to them, and say we can save you normally ten to 
as much as 30 percent um, but it does require switching and the switching is our is our our task so we we need to get the data from their merchant company which in most cases we can it's pretty uh complex because of the, the rules but it's encrypted data and we uh, get it into our system and then at that point they start saving money because we've got a better deal than, than what typically they've got is your slow pay follow-up the same as using a collection company no uh it's it's just like a it's a series of touches during the month when a customer starts to get so subscriber starts to get behind so no it's not we don't take a, you know, a percentage of anything no it's basically just they're busy they can't get it done they need collection letters to be sent they basically tell us what to do and then we execute on that but it's it's uh, text texting and email and calling uh, automated calling statements and letters so no it's not at all what a collection agency would do we're not a collection agency it's it's first party okay so someone is is asking whether we can email them the webinar gave me their email address because she missed the beginning uh, we're not mailing you your the webinar it's going to be posted on the K&K website under alarm webinars it'll be there in a day or so and you'll be able to get the whole thing and also they're inquiring about pricing you should also pick up the phone and there's the number you, you can call Scott or Shay and and get all the information that you need and and or you can email them as well okay got a couple uh, time for a couple more questions do quotes have different payment options built in yep yes go ahead Shay yeah they, there's I don't know 15 different ones pre-built in at this point all the way from 50 50 to 30 30 30 30 um, but yes, you can customize them however you need to. And there's also progress billing on the work order for that install. So it can all be taken care of through the system. How often do you update your software? Not as yeah. often as I update my contracts, I hope. <laughs> it's, I don't know, Ken. It could be close. Uh, we, I think we, on average, we probably do two, two releases a month. So two um, updates a month and it's all since it's cloud-based it's all behind the scenes but it's pretty often we're constantly working on making our system oh, better. Oh, but it's automated so customers won't even necessarily know you're making the changes it's yeah it's it's to the cloud system so they don't we we send our release notes on each new release saying we did this this and this you know and, and usually those updates and changes are based on a customer customer input what they wanted to see us you know change do, the, do you find that those changes are uh, uh, cause new training requirements for the customers um only if it's a new module i think um you know we re recently redid our ticket screen so but we sent out a pretty uh, detailed explanation of here's what changed so uh not usually i think it'd be rare that there'd be a new training session required because we document it we document right. it. can invoices populate the multiple uh, tech names and individuals, uh, individual hours for, for those that are on the job. I yes, if I'm understanding the question, so Joe spent five hours, uh, Henry spent you know three hours. Uh, yeah, it, it that's not that's not going to be a recurring invoice, but on a service invoice, yes, it, it would be included. If, if you don't want a tech submitting invoices in the field, can they be done separately by office staff uh, work orders? great question everything in our system is permission based so you can lock down the tech so they cannot do you could even say they can't even close the ticket out because let's say that the office folks want to review the ticket make sure it's right make sure it's complete so yeah there's a lot of granular permissions in cornerstone that allow you to if you don't want to give the tech certain abilities you can you can prevent that uh what is the cost for onboarding yeah, good question. Um, depends on the package that we're converting from, uh, but typically, and depends on the, the, yeah, the package we're converting from or where the data is coming from. If we get a clean data set, let's say an export from QuickBooks, then it's pretty inexpensive. But just to give you a ballpark, it's usually a thousand to two thousand bucks in most cases. Yep, that's on average. He's right. Yep. 
How would you rate the sales quote presentation to clients compared to your competitors? Um, I'm gonna let Shay tackle that. I've, I've you spent more time on the competitors, uh, and, and we do have two options: our kind of our internal cornerstone system, quoting system, and then the portal, the portal integration, which is a different animal. Um, go ahead, Shay. Sure. I, you'd have to look at each one individually. I don't like to pick on competitors directly. I would say ours, because of the agility between behind them, either you're using Portal, which is incredibly robust. They've done a very, very good job at designing proposals, or you're using our software directly. The fact that you can change up to 12 different sections, you can add in riders like a Kirschenbaum contract that they need to sign when they sign, up, sign on. Um, it shows you things like P&L. You can edit your parts in real time on the quote you can design it to have your logo on it, introductory letters. I just think the level of agility it has makes it, I wouldn't say superior, but very, very good compared to a lot of competitors. Agreed. How much, how much is the portal integration module? I don't believe we charge for the integration other than possibly set up time, which you know I think we charge a hundred bucks an hour to get it set up. So maybe an hour or two to get it working. And then basically it's a subscription with portal um so if you if we have attendees today that use portal then it's it's using your ex existing subscription so you pay them you know their monthly fee and, and what does your customer need to do if its software is not one you can convert from yeah um we get creative uh we look at the database and see if because uh, we work with we had a list but we worked with others over the years so if it's a sql database or an accessible database we have a couple of people that look at it on our, on our team and say okay we, we we can at least get to the data export it to excel and then work on it from there so it's it's kind of a creative let's see if we can get to it and and try to get it organized if it, if a tech gets payment in the field is it automatically updated on the account it is yep and any changes they make on the ticket is in real time now i will say it is a web app so you will need internet or 5g phone service 4g phone service wherever you are but as long as you have that if you make a change it will update on the software side they'll simply have to just refresh the work order or the invoice. Uh, am i losing control of my billing when i use cornerstone i will take that one um Quite the opposite. Everything that happens in the system, it's totally transparent. So uh, our users, our dealers manage their accounts. They basically, you know, if, if billing is running tonight and it's five o'clock this afternoon and they make a change to a recurring account, uh, let's say they add a charge or a service, and it'll be reflected when, when we run the bill. So they're basically doing things exactly as they would if they were running a package in-house it's just it automates it, by automating it it saves them a lot of time and many of the steps to submit payments let's say for auto pays get the paper bills out the door no they're not losing control it's just automating things it's a time saver uh, no different than uh, let's say uh, a payroll service where you outsource you know payroll to a company they give you a nice portal to log into you you need to do some work you need to keep your accounts up to date when you're ready to run payroll but uh, the process of then running payroll and then submitting the, let's say, the state and federal forms, that's all taken care of. So it's similar to that. I don't know if you need a clarification on this one. It, the, quest, the question is, no GL, correct? Everything goes through QuickBooks. Or whatever GL you have. We have companies that use other GLs. Uh, what we show, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> what we showed you is um, basically can be exported to CSV, Excel, format and used for Sage, used for uh, Microsoft Dynamics, used for whatever other GL package you have. But the one that we're directly integrated with at the moment is QuickBooks. Last call for questions and last call for final word from Scott or Shay. Just to say, we appreciate the opportunity Ken, to, to Ken and his team. Um, we had a good, good attendance today, so we gave you our contact info. I think we're an easy company to work with. We've been around a long time. Uh, the software reflects that as well. Uh, I think it's well designed, well laid out. It's easy to work with. So we'd love to hear from you. Well, I want to thank uh, Scott and Shay for a great presentation. And uh, Cornerstone Building Solutions is on the Alarm Exchange. 
and uh, check them out. Here's the information. The information is right on your screen. So with that, I'm going to thank you again. Thank you for attending. Thank, thank uh, goodness almost. This is the end of the software presentations. <laughs> and, uh, and the Central Station presentations start next week. We're looking forward to that. Okay, everybody. Right. Have a great Thanks. day. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you.